Hey guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you 5 drawing ideas to try when you're bored. These drawing prompts are perfect for any time of the year, and they're easy enough for any skill level. I colored all of my drawings from today's video with this huge set of 320 alcohol-based markers from Ohuhu, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. These are my absolute favorite markers. And I'm not just saying that because they sponsored me. Like, if you go back and watch any of my other sketchbook videos, you'll see that this is probably my most used art supply. So I was super excited to get this set of 320 brush markers from Uhuhu's Honolulu series. This set has literally every color that you could ever want. They have a brush tip on one end and a chisel tip on the other. One thing that I really like about these is that they include these four swatch sheets, so you can go ahead and test all your markers to see what the colors actually look like on paper. It also comes with this plastic sheet that you can put in between your sketchbook pages to make sure none of the ink bleeds through. Seriously, now that I have this set, I don't think that'll ever run out of markers. This is Ohuhu's biggest brush marker set ever, but if you don't need this many colors, they have lots of smaller sets to choose from as well. If you're in the market for some new art supplies, make sure to check out Ohuhu using the links in the description. They have a huge Black Friday sale coming up, you won't want to miss it. So with all that being said, let's just get into the video. Idea number one is to color a drawing using only one color. I thought this would be the perfect way to test out my new markers, because now I have so many different shades to choose from. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you might be surprised that I did not choose purple for this drawing. Um, honestly, same. But for some reason, I decided to go with green this time. This set came with so many different shades of green, and I figured that I could use some of the lighter greens for the skin if I decided to draw a person. Which I did. I drew a girl wearing a frog bucket hat with some vines behind her. I guess I could have just gone with like an actual frog, couldn't I? But that would have been too easy. If you look at the color chart, I use the colors from about here to here. Personally, I feel like some of these kind of skew more towards yellow than green, but hey, Ohuhu says they're green, so works for me. I haven't done a challenge like this where I work with a limited color palette in quite some time. I feel like this type of thing was popular around maybe like 2018. Man, that was such a simpler time. One of my first drawing videos that I ever did on this channel was a three marker challenge video where I drew this girl. I'd like to think that I've improved a little bit since then. Um, I'm telling you, if you ever feel like your art isn't good enough or whatever, just go back and watch some of my older videos because, yikes. I was sort of indecisive about what to do for her skin. At first, I was just going to leave it white and add shadows with this yellow green, but eventually I just decided to go all in. Ohuhu definitely gets some of the credit for helping me learn how to color and helping me find my art style. If you watch some of my older videos, I experimented with lots of different art supplies when I was first starting out. I used to use a lot of colored pencils, but those take way too much patience and layering. Acrylic paint, I like that a little bit better, but with that, you have to wait for it to dry and it's kind of annoying having to like go back and forth and dip your brush into the paint. I tried water-based markers too, but I never liked how streaky they are. And watercolor, like frankly, I just suck at that. But with alcohol-based markers, I don't have any of those issues. These make it so much easier to get those nice flat blocks of color. I always end up going back to these because they're the easiest way to get the best result in the shortest amount of time. Which is good because these videos take way too long. But anyways, here's how the finished drawing turned out. This was actually kind of fun. It might be cool to do like a series of these pages where you go through every color of the rainbow. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite color? The second idea I came up with is to add origami to a page. I made these origami mushrooms in my last video. I'll link it down below if you want to learn how to make them. I had a couple left over, so I thought it might be cool to use one as a jumping off point for a drawing in my sketchbook. I traced the mushroom so that I would know how big that it was, then drew my scene around it. I decided to draw a fairy sitting on top of the mushroom. Not the most original concept, I know. I kind of did like a really similar thing on one of the other pages in this sketchbook. Actually, um, I made this like fairy door type thing, but you know what? It's okay because this one turned out way better in my opinion. Improvement, we love to see it. I kept the coloring on this one super simple. I really don't have that much to say about it to be honest. Definitely not an outfit that I could personally pull off. Like listen, okay, I finally got used to the whole crop top thing, but it has to be with high-waisted pants. Low-rise jeans, still not a huge fan, but like if I'm gonna do it, it needs to be with a long top. Like we can have one or the other, but we cannot have both. Anyways, yes, the drawing. So I colored the mushroom cap with this sort of maroon color. 
I stuck my origami mushroom to the page with some double-sided tape. I put the big one and I still thought that like it needed something else, so I put a mini one on either side. I colored these ones with Crayola markers, which is why the color's not as smooth. If you want to do something other than mushrooms, there are tons of origami tutorials on Pinterest, which if you're not following me on Pinterest, shameless self-promo, it's linked below. But here's how my finished page turned out. I actually really like this one. I think this is such a fun way to add a little bit more interest to your sketchbook. The next idea is to draw a photo from your camera roll. You can just pick a random one that you like, or you could come up with some sort of rule like choose a picture from a year ago or a picture of your pet or something. I decided to draw this picture of my cat Marty. I took this picture back in October of 2021, which coincidentally was like exactly a year before I did the sketch for this. But I freaking love this picture, like he's so cute. For some reason last year I got super into crocheting again and I made this sweater type thing. It was actually a super easy pattern and I picked this one because the girl that made the pattern had the same measurements as I did at the time. But you know, I dropped a couple pounds since then, got a little healthier, like it's a good thing. Except I spent all this time on this freaking sweater and now it's too big and it's not like a cute oversized way it's just like it looks bad moral of the story next time i'll just make like a blanket or something i really need to stop wasting my time on random hobbies like this though i'll get so excited about something i'll do all this research buy all the supplies for it and then like a week later i'll forget about it it's awful it's one thing if i can use it for a youtube video right but crochet i feel like i should probably leave that to the people that are actually good at it let's be real i gotta follow somebody else's video for that i am not not that talented. Plus you guys like it better when I do easier stuff anyway. But I get so mad at myself when I do this because it's like, for the love of God, Megan, can you please do something productive for once in your life? Apparently not. What else have I done? I got super into 3D printing for a while. Guess who has not touched that in a year? I do not stick to things, like I'm simply not reliable. But you know what? Like at least I'm self-aware. Comment down below, do you have any hobbies that you've like abandoned? Um, because I have a lot. I sort of had a hard time figuring out how to color Marty's fur. I ended up getting a lighter brown and going over the darker brown to give it that sort of streaky texture. I was gonna do his whiskers with a white gel pen, but I really did not like how that looked, so I tried to rub it off real quick before it dried. That was not super successful, but I tried. Anyways, here's how the finished page turned out. I'm honestly not 100% happy with it, but you know what? My dad came in while I was working on this and he was like, you drew that? Like, no way. He was probably just hyping me up, but you know what? At least my dad likes it. Idea number four is to draw models from a clothing website. My favorite website to do this with is Urban Outfitters because they always put their models in unique poses and some of them are more staged in various locations as opposed to just having everything on a white background. I ended up using this one as a reference. As you can see, I definitely didn't copy it exactly, but that's kind of the point of a reference, isn't it? So how do we feel about these platform Uggs? Because personally, I'm here for it. Low key, I kind of want these. I still have my first pair of Uggs from like sixth or seventh grade. I wore these things down like, at this point, you can feel the floor when you walk in them, and I don't know why I still have them, but I feel like the platform ones might solve that issue. Apparently, the soles are actually a couple of layers glued together, and you know what these remind me of? Have you guys ever seen, back in the day, people, they used to make their own platform shoes with, like, they would hot glue flip-flops to the bottom of Converse, basically, and I never made any, but for some reason, I thought that this was, like, the epitome of fashion at one point. Like, I thought these were so cool. Comment down below, what's your favorite brand of shoes? This drawing was not going the way that I wanted to. The sketch wasn't the best, and then I really wasn't liking how I colored it, and, you know, everything just kind of snowballed from there. I tried to save it by layering colored pencil on top of the marker. Honestly, I still don't like it, but I really wanted to finish this video and I wasn't trying to start over. I tried my best, okay? It's sometimes things just don't work out. In the original photo, the stairs filled up the whole entire background, but for my drawing, I had her sitting at the top of some stairs with a wall behind her because frankly, that's just easier. I colored the wall with a light purple marker, then I used a few other colors to draw flower shapes on top. This was sort of meant to be like a nod to the flowers on the carpet of the reference image, but also this was kind of me like trying to distract from how badly I screwed up her face. Girly, I'm so sorry, like you're so pretty, but I just messed this up so bad. But after all that, here's how the finished page turned out. Like I said, not exactly my best work, but you know what? Things don't always turn out how you plan and that's okay. At the end of the day, this is just a sketchbook and it doesn't have to be perfect. The last idea is to design a cake. It can be a birthday cake, a wedding cake, what other occasion do people eat cake for? I don't know. But the reason that I came up with this idea 
was because it was recently my birthday, unfortunately for me. Apparently, you don't have to be that famous to be on famous birthdays. Either that or, like, they maybe expected me to become famous and I just didn't. But, like, I'm still on there, so good for me. I really hate the picture that's on there, though. Like, they zoomed in on my face and it's not a good look. It's a good thing I can make stuff because I am not exactly photogenic. Um, I mean, I have gotten a little bit better about it, but not that much. Sometimes I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like, hey, I'm actually kind of cute. Then I go to take a picture and I get humbled real quick. I was sort of inspired by the frog bucket hat from the drawing that I did earlier to do one of those frog cakes that were popular last year. These are so cute. You know what? My mom, she actually collects frogs. Maybe I can make her one of these for her birthday. Except like real talk, I suck at baking and cooking. I have maybe like five things that I can cook. I did always have fun decorating things though. Comment down below. A, do you like cake? And B, what is your favorite flavor of cake? My mom makes a chocolate one with peanut butter frosting that's pretty good. Cake is kind of one of those things where I could take it or leave it though. Like personally, I think cookies are better. I think it would be really cool if you do some sort of dessert and then actually try to make it too. <laughs> Anyways, here's how my finished drawing turned out. It's definitely super simple, but it was kind of fun. So that was everything for this video. Make sure to let me know which page was your favorite. I think my favorite was either the origami mushroom page or the one color drawing. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Again, thank you so much to Ahuhu for sponsoring. Definitely make sure to check them out using the links below. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys later. Bye!